But again, these two things would not avail if they were not mixed with a still more essential and divine quality, namely a firm faith in God. Brethren, do you believe in prayer? Oh, I know you pray because you are God's people. But do you believe in the power of prayer? There are a great many Christians that do not. They think it is a good thing. They believe that sometimes it does wonders. But they do not think that prayer, real prayer, is always successful. They think that its effect depends upon many other things, but that it has not any essential quality or power in itself. Now my own soul's conviction is that prayer is the grandest power in the entire universe, that it has a more omnipotent force than electricity, attraction, gravitation, or any other of those secret forces which men have called by names, but which they do not understand. Prayer hath as palpable, as true, as sure, as invariable an influence over the entire universe as any of the laws of matter. When a man really prays, it is not a question whether God will hear him or not. He must hear him, not because there is any compulsion in the prayer, but there is a sweet and blessed compulsion in the promise. God has promised to hear prayer, and He will perform His promise. As He is the most high and true God, He cannot deny Himself. Oh, to think of this! that you, a puny man, may stand here and speak to God, and through God may move all the worlds. Yet when your prayer is heard, creation will not be disturbed. Though the grandest ends be answered, providence will not be disarranged for a single moment. Not a leaf will fall earlier from the tree, not a star will stay in its course, nor one drop of water trickle more slowly from its fount. All will go on the same, and yet your prayer will have effected everything. It will speak to the decrees and purposes of God as they are being daily fulfilled, and they will all shout to your prayer and cry, Thou art our brother. We are decrees, and thou a prayer. But thou art thyself a decree, as old, as sure, as ancient as we are. Our prayers are God's decrees in another shape. The prayers of God's people are but God's promises breathed out of living hearts, and those promises are the decrees only put into another form and fashion. Do not say, How can my prayers affect the decrees? They cannot, except in so much that your prayers are decrees, and that as they come out, Every prayer that is inspired of the Holy Ghost unto your soul is as omnipotent and as eternal as that decree which said, Let there be light, and there was light, or as that decree which chose His people and ordained their redemption by the precious blood of Christ. Thou hast power in prayer, and thou standest today among the most potent ministers in the universe that God has made. Thou hast power over angels. They will fly at thy will. Thou hast power over fire and water and the elements of earth. Thou hast power to make thy voice heard beyond the stars. Where the thunders die out in silence, thy voice shall wake the echoes of eternity. The ear of God himself shall listen, and the hand of God himself shall yield to thy will. He bids thee cry, Thy will be done, and thy will shall be done. When thou canst plead his promise, then thy will is his will. Seems it not, my dear friends, an awful thing to have such a power in one's hands as to be able to pray? You have heard sometimes of men who pretended to have a weird and mystic might by which they could call up spirits from the vasty deep, by which they could make showers of rain or stop the sun. It was all a figment of the fancy. But were it true... The Christian is a greater magician still. If he has but faith in God, there is nothing impossible to him. He shall be delivered out of the deepest waters. He shall be rescued out of the sorest troubles. In famine he shall be fed. In pestilence he shall go unscathed. Amidst calamity he shall walk firm and strong. 
in war he shall ever be shielded, and in the day of battle he shall lift up his head, if he can but believe the promise, and hold it up before God's eyes, and plead it with the spell of unfaltering reliance. There is nothing, I repeat it, there is no force so tremendous, no energy so marvelous, as the energy with which God has endowed every man, who like Jacob can wrestle, like Israel can prevail with him in prayer. But we must have faith in this. We must believe prayer to be what it is, or else it is not what it should be. Unless I believe my prayer to be effectual, it will not be. For on my faith will it to a great extent depend. God may give me the mercy even when I have not faith. That will be His own sovereign grace, but He has not promised to do it. But when I have faith and can plead the promise with earnest desire, it is no longer a probability as to whether I shall get the blessing or whether my will shall be done. Unless the Eternal will swerve from His word, unless the oath which He has given shall be revoked and He Himself shall cease to be what He is, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of Him. And now to mount one step higher, together with definite objects, fervent desires, and strong faith in the efficacy of prayer there should be, and oh, may divine grace make it so with us, there should be mingled a realizing expectation. We should be able to count over the mercies before we have got them, believing that they are on the road. Reading the other day in a sweet little book, which I would commend to the attention of you all, written by an American author who seems to know the power of prayer thoroughly, and to whom I am indebted for many good things, a little book called The Still Hour. I met with a reference to a passage in the book of Daniel, the tenth chapter, I think, where, as he says, the whole machinery of prayer seems to be laid bare. Daniel is on his knees in prayer, and Michael the archangel comes to him. He talks with him and tells him that as soon as ever Daniel began to set his heart to understand and to chasten himself before God, his words were heard, and the Lord had dispatched the angel. Then he tells him in the most businesslike manner in the world, I should have been here before, but the prince of Persia withstood me. Nevertheless, the prince of thy nation helped me, and I am come to comfort and instruct thee. See now, God breathes the desire into our hearts, and as soon as the desire is there, before we call, he begins to answer. Before the words have got halfway up to heaven, while they are yet trembling on the lip, knowing the words we mean to speak, he begins to answer them, sends the angel. The angel comes and brings down the needed blessing. Why, the thing is a revelation if you could see it with your eyes. Some people think that spiritual things are dreams and that we are talking fancies. Nay, I do believe there is as much reality in a Christian's prayer as in a lightning flash, and the utility and excellency of the prayer of a Christian may be just as sensibly known as the power of the lightning flash when it rends the tree, breaks off its branches, and splits it to the very root. Prayer is not a fancy or fiction. It is a real, actual thing, coercing the universe, binding the laws of God themselves in fetters, and constraining the High and Holy One to listen to the will of His poor but favored creature man. But we want always to believe this. We need a realizing assurance in prayer, to count over the mercies before they come, to be sure that they are coming, to act as if we had got them. When you have asked for your daily bread, no more to be disturbed with care, but to believe that God has heard you and will give it to you. When you have taken the case of your sick child before God, to believe that the child will recover, or if it should not, that it will be a greater blessing to you and more glory to God, and so to leave it to Him.